Hi, Rand. Teresa Walker with the Associated Press. Uh, as you are learning names, learning your way around this building, there's a, a lot of questions facing this franchise uh, this offseason. Do you start with a uh, salary cap, or is quarterback maybe the, the top of your to-do list and trying to figure out where to go next? I think uh, Mike Vrabel is the top of my to-do list, um, and us working together and forging a relationship and coming up with our uh, plan on how to build this roster. You know, I think uh, there are a multitude of things that we need to do, that we need to uh, fix and make this organization better. But my number one priority is spending more time with Mike Vrabel and learning the systems that are here in place and how I can help improve upon them, and which will help us build a championship team. Randy, what are the, what are the challenges of getting to know your scouts and scouting simultaneously? Well, it's um, so just kind of give you a, a little bit behind the curtain. Um, came in this morning uh, pretty early uh, before all of this, so I've, I've already met with um, with RC and the pro department, and um, and then the college scouting department as well. My plan isn't to come in here and flip everything over right now. I think that would be extremely selfish. Uh, I'm the one new person in, so it's easier for one person to adjust to a group of 20 or 25 uh, people. So my job right now is to come in and learn the systems and processes that have already been in place. Um, and there are some commonalities um, from what J-Rob had here versus what I've had in the past. So it's a little bit easier to learn the language. Um, but just over time, man, just spending time. It's just like any, any relationship. It takes time and it takes effort and work. And I'm willing to do that and I'm going to do that. Mike, I mean, did you know Mike well before you got here? And maybe what are your thoughts about what have your thoughts been about him from afar and now getting to know him a little bit? So uh, Tuesday was the first time that I met Mike in person. Um, I, 2005, um, I was a bottom of the roster player for the Colts. So I was inactive in the 2005 game, the Colts Patriots game where Mike played. I was inactive, didn't get to meet him then. Uh, my father who's here uh, in attendance was on the staff in 2009-2010 uh, uh, at Kansas City Chiefs uh, where Mike finished. So never had a, a relationship with Mike. I've always respected him. Uh, Mike is a, he's a football coach. And you could see that and, you know, it permeates off of him, off of the screen. You know, so I was excited to get the opportunity uh, to meet with him this past Tuesday. And like he said, we just had a level of conversation that could have could have went hours, you know. And so I, what I do recognize and understand with Mike, our core philosophy and, and just our ground base of football, it comes from a similar place. So that's going to allow us to kind of start, you know, in a, at a higher uh, level. And I'm just looking forward to uh, working with him and building, the, uh, building this team. Right, you're known as a collaborator, and that was a big thing that this organization wanted. In your meeting with uh, Mike Vrabel, like, what was it that made you feel like that relationship would work? And then also, how can you lean on your past experience seeing John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, how that worked? How will that help you in this relationship? Right, so, you know, I've been multiple organizations, um, like I've mentioned, and I've seen it done, you know, different ways. But the best way I've seen it done is when the head coach and the GM are in lockstep. Right. It's my job. It's our job as scouts is to execute Mike and his coaching staff's vision. Right. I'm not calling plays on Sunday. I'm not designing plays throughout the week. And so it's our job to bring the right players in here to execute his vision. But in our conversation um, that we had the other day, again, like I said before, our grassroots, you know, foundation of football comes from a similar place. And we see the game, you know, the same way. And so I'm just excited to, you know, learn those systems, the offensive system, defensive system, and special team system that he's put in place. And I think having a better knowledge of that is going to help, you know, me work with him and build a championship football team. Other than the fact that it's a GM job that's open, what was attractive about this specific job to you? These people on the front row. Um, you know, obviously, um, and I talked with Miss Amy about this, GM has always been a dream of mine but it was always about the right fit, you know, and it wasn't about getting the job. It was being in a place that's going to support you and put you in a position to keep the job. And like I said, um, when I met, you know, uh, these guys in, uh, I guess three, four weeks ago, whenever it was, it, it really opened my eyes. And then throughout the interview process and actually getting a chance to meet uh, Kenneth throughout that process, um, it just confirmed to me that this is the place that I wanted to be. You know, I'm coming from a good situation in San Francisco. Uh, it was a really great building, you know, a lot of strong relationships there. So for me to leave and want to seek opportunity somewhere else, it had to be a special place. And I truly believe that this place is special. Yeah, what would your team look like if everything goes according to plan? Uh, we'd be hosting trophies and having parades and, you know, 
Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a grind. It's gonna be a process. And you know, like I said, um, our thing is right now is me and Mike developing our relationship and really me coming in this building and learning, you know, what's in place and how I can add value. You know, one thing I imparted on the group uh, during my interview, uh, my stepfather was in the military and I moved around, you know, a bunch uh, throughout my life. And being living in San Jose these past few years, that's the longest I've ever lived in one spot in my 41 years of living. And so I've always had to be the person to come in and just insert myself into a new culture, learn that new culture and see where I fit. So I feel this is natural. You know, this is a natural thing for me to do is come in and learn my fit. And over time, I'll establish myself, you know, as a leader and help Mike build the team that he wants. As you, as you peruse this roster and you see kind of where things stand right now, do you feel like this team is maybe just a few fixes away from being a contender again? Or do you feel like that there's major changes? That no, this be, is a competitive be, team. This is a competitive team, and, and we can win football games. But at the end of the year, you you evaluate your roster every year, and you're always looking for ways to improve that. And so that's what we're going to do here. Um, although I feel the team is competitive and we're good, the, the objective is not be good. The objective is to be great. And so we're going to continue to work to build a great roster. Um, and that's going to be every year, you know. So it's, you can always take it to a new height. So that's going to be our approach. Are there common threads with the three organizations you've been with in terms of operations, scouting, decision making, all that? And if so, what are they? So, <clears throat> again, uh, you know, here under J Rob's tutelage and under RC's tutelage, um, a lot of the core uh, scouting aspects, uh, the genesis of it was New England. Uh, which is where I got cut my teeth in Atlanta under Thomas Dimitrov, who was a college director uh, in New England. We learned the system uh, from Les. We kind of brought a little bit of it to uh, St. Louis. Um, and then when I got to San Francisco, the, the aspects of it were the exact same under John Lynch and Adam Peters, who also worked with the guys in New England. So that's a lot of the foundation. Um, and so those are the close things. Um, I think in all three buildings, um, those three buildings and now including this, as I'm getting to know these guys, uh, there are great scouts here. Uh, there are guys who are passionate about the job, passionate about the sport, and passionate about winning. And um, so I think those common things will allow us to be successful. What do you think of Brian Tannehill, and, and is he your quarterback? I don't think that's fair. Um, at this point, we're still evaluating the roster. I am. You know, and that's going to take further conversations um, with me and Mike. Ryan has been great here. He's won a lot of football games, and I look forward to us winning football games. But I still need more time, you know, to evaluate and make those decisions. As you know, this is a quarterback-driven league, and um, people are hired and fired every day over that position. So we want to – I want to spend more time evaluating that position so I'll have my own opinion, and Mike and I will confer and, and figure it out. How much do you pull from your journey – because it's been a ways to get here. You kind of described it from the different organizations you've worked with and pulling from what worked maybe and what didn't, and how beneficial is that now that you are that guy? Well, you know, like I said, coming in, I've seen it done you know, a bunch of different ways. And um, the one thing I, I take away from it is, again, goes back to that word collaboration. Like collaboration truly works. Um, you know, again, I've said it, uh, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, but I could be the greatest talent evaluator of all time, but if I can't bring Mike the players that he needs to fit his system, um, then it's not going to work. Um, and it's, you know, we're not here to collect talent. You know, we're here to build a team. And so, you know, just being able to pull from all my different experiences, you know, I tell my kids all the time, every situation is a learning situation. You're either learning what to do or what not to do. And so I've taken from all those lessons of what to do, what not to do is going to help, you know, help us in this part. So much of your experience coming on the pro side, um, how much draft side experience did you get in the last two years with the, with the elevation in San Francisco? And can you talk us through how much while you're on the pro side you were involved in the draft, or is that going to be a big jump for you? No, so um, I've been predominantly pro by title. Uh, so I've had draft experience since I've come into this league. Um, you know, just again under under uh, people who understood my skill set and allowed me to grow uh, from that space. So, uh, director of pro, uh, pro scout, those have just been my titles, but not necessarily my job. Thank you. You're the first black general manager in this franchise. How significant is that for your family and you? And when did it kind of click that you made history? Um, it's very significant. I understand I'm standing on the shoulder of giants. And there have been plenty of men 
uh, that have come before me that have laid this foundation that allowed me to be in this spot. And it's, uh, it's paramount in my mind to do the work and be successful, uh, to leave the door open, you know, for other young black men that are coming behind me because there are a lot of talented young black men that could do the job. They just need the opportunity. And, you know, I don't go out seeking, you know, to be the first black at anything. I just want to be the best me and, you know, um, very prideful. Um, but I just want to be the best. I don't want, I don't care if it's black, I don't care if it's white, I want to be the best. And the significance of it, uh, my aunt who's here, she texted me and asked, and I was like, honestly, I don't know. And she was like, well, you might want to find out, <laughs> you know, and know. And so that's when it first, you know, dawned on me um, that I was the first black GM in Titans history. What kind of whirlwind has it been ran since you got the job, I guess, flying back and forth across the country, trying to learn, I guess, players on this team, people in this building, uh, getting your family here. What, what has all that been like for you? Man, I tell you, a um, little bit of context. First interview was last Friday. Second interview was Tuesday. So let me, let me rewind. First interview was Friday. Fly back to the Bay Area. San Francisco play Seattle on Sunday, oh, Saturday. <laughs> Go to that game. Get an email from Burke, you know, uh, Saturday night. Hey, if we wanted to bring you back, when can we do that? We set a date. I get a text from Burke Sunday morning. Hey, we need to push it up. I'm back on a flight uh, Monday, back here, interview Tuesday, get a second interview. I'm sitting in the airport, and that's when I got the call, you know, from Miss Amy. Uh, just really sitting in the terminal, uh, receiving all this information that my dream was coming true and can't react because I'm in a terminal full of people that don't, <laughs> that don't know. Um, and I remember calling my wife and telling her, and she kind of thought I was playing because I, I had to keep a stoic, straight face. And, uh, but from that point, it's been, it's been a whirlwind, right? So that happens Tuesday. I fly home Tuesday night. Um, I go to the uh, 49ers building Wednesday, get a few things. We're on a flight the next day coming here. And so it's been a whirlwind. I can't, I'll be honest, I, I don't feel like I've been able to fully process it, you know. Um, but, you know, it's been, it's been great. This is what I always dreamed of, and so I'm just embracing it all. You, you play running back. Your dad was one of the best running back coaches and offensive coordinator. Do you think a team can win a Super Bowl in today's NFL built around a running back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I joke and I say, you know, it's cute to play, you know, Golden State Warriors football on, you know, October, September. But when those conditions change and you can't throw the ball up and down the yard, you better be able to run it and you better be able to defend it. And I think if you look at the teams that are in the playoffs that are still playing at this, at this stage, everybody's able to run the ball. So I think, you know, that you can win championships that way. How much does your, your past, your playing experience, how much does that help when it comes to painting that picture of a prospect for the scouts and coaches before they actually see them on film? I think my playing experience um, just gives a different context, right, in terms of the evaluation, you know, process. Uh, things I learned, you know, playing with Peyton Manning. You guys, you know, you know Peyton for the Omaha and all those checks and calls, but it gives you – you can't just know your spot playing with a guy like that. So you have to know what everybody, you know, is doing. And I think it kind of opens up your eyes uh, when I'm from this – vantage point of being a talent evaluator or being able to understand who's making the mistake, who's right, who's wrong. And sometimes it kind of helps you, you know, paint a better picture uh, of those young men that are playing. How much have you used analytics? Uh, have, the, have the Niners and, and Rams front office used analytics in helping you to select players, both pro and, and in the draft? And what do you think about analytics use by, by your coach? No, um, we've used analytics a lot um, in the 49ers. Um, in actuality, uh, Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, who's now the GM uh, in Minnesota, he ran our analytics department uh, a couple years ago. Uh, spent a lot of time with those guys. I think it definitely pays a part. You know, we trust our eyes as scouts, but sometimes the data can drive you uh, to a decision and help you see it from, from a different vantage point. So I think there's a place in our game for it. Um, you know, uh, we've talked about it um, in the, during the interview. I think in the, in the genesis of uh, analytics, it was kind of pitting analytics and scouting 
you know, against each other. And a lot of the things we did in scouting was essentially analytics. It just didn't have the title. So it has a part in our game, and we're going to use every tool here to uh, help us build a championship roster. Yeah, the first NFL accelerator program, you get this job. Ian's right here with you. Do you think that's coincidence, or was the, it that helpful? No, I think it's helpful and, uh, you know, extremely appreciative, you know, to uh, Commissioner Goodell, you know, Jonathan Bean and all those beautiful people at the uh, league office that spearheaded the program. Uh, again, that was my first introduction, you know, to this group of people. And they, they, were, they embraced the process, just being able to be in a room this size with owners and potential GM candidates. Um, they were open to the conversation. And my initial conversation, you know, with them, I guess, allowed them to be a little bit more comfortable with me and want to explore the possibilities. So it works. You know, I, I'm, I'm here, I think, in part uh, because of it. So it works. So it's something that I hope the league continues to use and continue to find a different way to grow it. Individual experience that you had scouting with this 49er group, like an individual player that there's a story that you're really proud of that has materialized itself with the current 49ers roster? Um, that, that one, um, two things, two stories, quick ones. You'll quickly learn about me. I like to tell stories. Uh, um, and it's not necessarily about myself, right? Um, we talked about analytics earlier. Um, Demetrius Washington, he's the uh, VP of Ops for Minnesota. He ran our um, analytics department after Kwesi left. Uh, he does his metrics, you know, to find, you know, all his guys. So he comes to me, he has a running back, and he's like, man, my numbers are telling me this is the best outside zone running running back in the draft. He was like, but I'm not walking in there with Kyle with just this paper to say that. Can you watch this guy and see if you can confirm what, my, what the tape saw? And... I watched the tape, that was my first exposure to the player, and I agreed with him, and then that player ended up being Elijah Mitchell that we took in the sixth round, which last year, if we don't have Elijah, we don't go on the run that we went on. And even added to that story, uh, D'Amico Ryans, it was his first year as D coordinator, and that round, that pick, was going to be his linebacker. And D'Amico, some kind of when he came in the draft room, Elijah's tape was on. And he was watching Elijah, and he called Johnny Holland, our linebacker coach, up and was like, Coach, this running back is better than the linebacker we're going to pick. And so we shifted from taking a linebacker and took Elijah. And it just kind of shows to the collaboration of how that whole operation works. Um, so those are the two, two that stood out. What is, it about the, uh, what is it about the 49ers organization? What did you learn from that, that they've had – such success with guys like Mitchell or George Kittle, even Brock Purdy in, in the late rounds of drafts? So um, that was one of the things I touched on as well in my uh, interview. Um, again, it goes back to the word collaboration. You know, that fifth, sixth, seventh round is work of the scouts and it's the work of the assistant coaches. Those guys spending time together, understanding the scheme and finding players, quote unquote, depth level players that are going to fit our roster and help fill out the bottom of our roster. So those are the, the areas where you start to use more of your staff, right? And so us being able in San Francisco to hit on those picks was totally a, a collaboration of our assistant coaches and our scouts. What you've seen of this team identity of the Titans the last few years. What jumps out? And do you feel like that your preference and what you're going to bring is, is going to fit that existing identity? What jumps out is how hard and how tough this team is, how hard they play. And I think they're, uh, the team has been made in the image of our head coach. You know, Mike is a tough guy. He works hard. I just almost said something else, and I saw my kids sitting there. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, think, I, I think the team is built in his image. And, and, and what Mike believes in. And like I said before, you know, our core foundation of fo football comes from the same tree, and I, I, and I believe in those. This team's been devastated by injuries the last two years. Did you discuss that with Mike, and how much do you envision kind of turning over every stone to see <laughs> what the medical department, science, analytics, all of those things tell you about how to, to maybe – limit those uh, as best you can in a violent sport? Um, we, we talked about it, and we're going to explore every option to figure out how we can keep our guys uh, on the field. But like you said, it's a violent sport. There's not going to be a perfect way to keep everybody healthy. That's just not possible. 
Um, but we're going to explore every option to figure out how we're going to be able to maximize uh, keeping our guys on the field. Policy then, or your idea on bringing in guys who are currently injured or have a history of injuries? I mean, obviously, you don't want to, hopefully, not bring in you know injured guys, right? You can't you can't get anything out of anyone if they're not available, you know. So our 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 mission is going to be to put you know systems in place where we can get guys on the healthier side. Um, but you know, once you once you kick this thing off, nobody's ever 100, percent you know, again. So it'll be about you know maximizing guys with where they are. Rand, how familiar are you with this roster already? And kind of walk us through the process for you the next couple of days or weeks, trying to get up to speed with where this team is currently. Uh, I have a solid baseline uh, of the team. Um, you know, um, you know that's a part of the interview process, right? You you can't go in there and try to fake your way through the job because Miss Amy's going to ask the question and she knows the answer. So um, I feel good about my knowledge of the roster, um, but again, that's tape. I don't know the people. You know, and that's where uh, Vraves and I, when we spoke, you know, he was giving me a, a little insight on the people. So I think that's just in, as important, you know, because uh, I have a thing, you know, it's not mine. I stole it from a friend. It's called a 21-3 rule, right? So, um, and he's, he's in the NBA. Um, we all have a way of seeing these players as players 24 hours a day when in actuality they're only players while they're in your building. So uh, I think it's just as important to know the people um, just as well as you know the player. You know, so that's the area where with our roster, I want to get to know the people. And I'm going to make a couple phone calls to a couple guys, you know, when I leave from here. Um, and what was the second part of your question? Just what the process is like for you in the next couple of days and weeks, getting up to speed with where um, everything's at currently. Meetings and more meetings. Um, you know, Vrabes and I are going to continue to spend time together, uh, continue to spend time with the scouts. Um, again, I'm learning their systems and processes uh, right now uh, for the next four months. Uh, learning their language, so it's going to be, you know, time on task. So uh, uh, that's that's going to be it for the next four months until we find the right process that fits, you know, our organization. It's not about what I want to come in here and do, but the scouts, you know, they're the lifeblood of what we do. So I want to be able to put something in place that benefits them. Um, and so we're going to continue to create that over the coming months. Have you and Mike had any discussions yet about the offensive coordinator opening and just kind of how involved in that search do you want to be? No, like I said, man, I just got here yesterday. Um, <laughs> just got hired on Tuesday, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm here to help Mike in any way um, that he sees fit. Um, obviously, Mike has been here. He has a way he wants to do things, and I respect that uh, totally. So wherever I can add value to Mike from that standpoint, I'm here for it. You got a final say on the roster, Randy? I don't think that matters because um, I think the 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 word and, and what we truly believe here is collaborating. I think I think all that comes down to, in my opinion, is a matter of, of ego. Uh, Mike and I, we're here to work together, and we're going to bring the people in here that we see fit, and we're not going to see it the same way all the time. But he and I will have the mutual respect to be able to work through that and we'll get the right people in here. Would you be in a former running back? and watching Derrick Henry throughout these years, specifically the success that he's had in this organization. What are your thoughts on him as a back and now being able to be here with a guy like that? Man, it's crazy. Like, I, so I've been watching Derrick since he was at Uli, you know, high school, Florida boy. So um, it's, it's crazy to see how – I remember uh, Coach Parcells told me one time, running back is a production base position. If you didn't get yards in high school and college, you're not getting them on this level. And if you look at Derek's history, he got yards in high school, he got them in college, and he's got them at this level. And, you know, more than anything, I can't wait to stand next to him to size him up, you know, to see see how big he really is in person. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm curious, uh, who's responsible for you coming up with the blue tie and, and outfit and all your kids? I know we're in the matching Jays. And, and, and what, is that, what is that like going from having everybody all in on the Falcons, the Rams, 49ers, and now the Titans? So um, I will give my agent, Sean, he's somewhere in here, his, his pitch to my wife, all with Titan blue, find him a Titan blue tie. So I'm not responsible for the tie. My wife found it. Um, the Jays were also her idea. She FaceTimed me the other day, and she was like, what do you think about these? And I saw them in the kid version. So I was like, no, get me some too. I want, you know, I want those too. Um, but again, honestly, man, like 
it's been it's been a whirlwind. Uh, you know, my two sons that are here, they're they're all in on football, and they spend a lot of time in the locker room. They spend a lot of time around the guys, and just being able to share those experiences with them. And um, you know, my daughters came up as you know Falcons and Rams and 49ers, and you know, hopefully we're here for a long time, and they could officially be you know Titans kids. Was executive vice president or vice president with with you and Mike clearly defined roles? Who and this is a question more for Amy, I guess. But who's who's in charge of the football operation? Again, I'm I'm a I'm a beat you guys to death with this word collaboration. That's why I'm here um, because Miss Amy sees me as a collaborator. So we're here to collaborate. We're here to build this thing together. Um, I think so many times in our game, we're, we're trying to fit people into boxes, you know, and that's just, in my mind, that's archaic. You know, we have to create a free flowing environment, you know, and that's not only with Mike and I downstairs, but it's with the people upstairs, you know, too. So it's gotta be a free flowing collaborative effort, you know, and I, I mean, I understand, you know, you got a job to do to, you know, define these things, but we truly, we're truly gonna collaborate. And so I don't think it matters who's over football operations, you know, the kitchen staff or whatever. Our job is to build the best building possible and we're gonna do that. Man, it's been it's been crazy, right? So we come in and you know the whole world of <laughs> the Titans was here and just the the outpour, you know, of love that um that we've gotten from from just that video alone from the highest of high, you know, um it's been it's been amazing. You know, and, and again it's a testament to who this organization is. You know, my family and I, we already feel welcome. We already feel a part of it. And um, honestly, man, my wife asked me last night, like, how could I try to remain so cool under that environment? But looking up and seeing all those people feeling the applause, that, that motivated me. You know, that motivated me to want to work my behind off, you know, for uh, the people of this building, the people of this organization.